So let's compare a few very simple C programs to their assembly counterparts and let's see if we can reason out what these programs actually do. So let's do int a is equal to 10. And as you can see, we get back some assembly here. Now here's the thing. This website, uh, Compile Explorer, is actually really useful for analyzing assembly code. I think for ergonomics, it's actually a lot better to use Compile Explorer. So basically what we're doing here is we are assigning a to the value of 10, int a is equal to 10. What this does is it corresponds to move d word ptr rpp minus four, the value 10. Now, what does this actually mean? And what this means is that we're moving the value of 10 to this memory location. So that's the important thing to understand. This memory location is getting the value of 10. And another thing about this is we know that int is four bytes because here we're subtracting from RPP, the number four. We all know that chars are a single byte. So if I say char A is equal to, let's say, the letter A, as you can see, we're subtracting from RBP one and we're moving into this memory location, as you can see, corresponds to A. And if we do our case A like this, as you can see, we change to 65. We're moving 65 into this memory location. So think of A as being this memory location from now on. And if we want to access A again, what we can do is we can say A is equal to, let's say, uh, B, for example, like this. And as you can see, the same memory location, so as you can see, RBP minus one, RBP minus one, we're, basically what we're doing here is we're moving 65 into RBP here, and then we're moving 98 into RBP here. So as you can see, we're moving 65 into this memory location here. And then on this line, we're moving 98 into this memory location right here. If you declare a variable like so, if you declare a char A and you don't assign anything to it, as you can see in our disassembly program, we don't actually have anything here because we're not doing anything with this char A. So here's an interesting thing about C. When you define, or should I say, when you declare a char A, on this line here. So on line three in the C program, we're declaring char A. As you can see, when I hover over this, there's nothing in the corresponding assembly that relates to this thing happening. A only gets a memory location. It only gets an address and so forward if we do A is equal to, let's say, B, something like that. So when we actually do something with this A, only then do we get assembly instructions corresponding to it. So here we have a 98 being moved into this memory location. A pointer is actually really simple when you take a look at it through assembly. So let's make a new variable int a is equal to, let's say, 10. So what we're doing here is, again, we're loading the value of 10 into this memory location. Awesome. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna define a pointer p and we're gonna take the address of a. Okay, now this is actually pretty easy to understand. And let me explain. So the first new thing we see here is lea and what we're doing here is we're loading the address of RBP minus four. So what we're doing here is we're loading the address of RBP minus four, and we're putting this into RAX. So again, RAX is a register and RBP minus four is just the, the computed address that we want to load. And on this line here, so, so when we uh, get the address of A and we store it in P, what we're doing is we're taking RAX. So RAX is the address of A. So this basically gets translated to this instruction here. And for the assignment to this pointer, what we're doing is we're saying keyword PTR, and we're putting this value into this memory location. Now, here's the thing. As you can see, the difference between this line and this line is that this is a D word and this is a keyword. And the difference between a D word and a keyword is that a D word is four bytes and a keyword is eight bytes. If you take a look at Stack Overflow, as you can see, um, a word is two bytes, a D word is four bytes, and a keyword is eight bytes. So next, what I wanna do is I want to actually assign to this pointer something, 25. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting the value of A to 25 here, and I'm setting it through this pointer. So in C, what we're doing here is we're setting the value of 25 to whatever P is pointing to. So as you can see here, we're setting 25 to be moved to this memory location. So as you can see, what you do here is when you access a memory location assembly, 
you load an effective address. So you load, let's say, whatever address you want. You can say RPP minus four or whatever. You put it into REX and then here, when we're actually assigning to this pointer, we're setting, we're saying 25 is being moved into this memory address. Okay, so let's play with arrays now. So let's declare an array A that has two elements. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna index. So as you can see, just like with uh, variables, when you declare an array, you don't get any uh, disassembly here because you haven't done anything with it yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say A zero is equal to, let's say. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying the first index of this array, I'm gonna assign it to the value of 10. And as you can see here, the corresponding disassembly we get 10 is being put into this memory location. Awesome. So let's do one, let's go through. Okay, so let's do the same thing, but we do int and index one, and we're gonna assign it to 20. And as you can see here, again, it's the same thing. We're moving 20 into this memory location. So let's try doing something kind of fun. Let's do int b is equal to 10. So what we're doing here is we're setting 10, or maybe I should change this to something else. Maybe we should say 30. Okay, so we're moving 30 into the memory location pointed to by RBP minus 12. Now, let's say what would happen if we do a minus one. So here's the funny thing about arrays. If you try to index a negative index like so, what are you doing? So let's uh, take a look at the corresponding disassembly here. So we're, uh, we're setting uh, 40 to be this memory location. But the funny thing is, uh, this memory location, RBP minus 12, is also being used by B. So basically what you would do here is you would basically overwrite the value of B with 40. I think this is actually undefined behavior, but uh, you probably, you could probably get away with doing this on most compilers. Okay, so here let's compare uh, while loop to assembler. And this is actually pretty fun because there is a lot more stuff to talk about here. Okay, so what we're doing here is, again, so getting back to the very beginning, load zero into this memory location. Again, this memory location, RBP minus four. So I'm pretty sure you're familiar with that already. So what we're doing here is we're loading zero into this memory location, awesome. Then what we're doing is we're comparing 10 to this value here. And what we're doing next is we're jumping if it's greater than or equal to. So again, so basically what happens here is when you do a comparison, this sets some flag in your, uh, in your CPU. And this will retain, this will check that flag and it will say if the flag is greater than or equal to, then jump to this label here. And this label here just tells us to just uh, pop and return. So that's pretty simple. Next, what we're doing is we're moving A, so we're basically moving A into EAX. Then what we're doing is we're doing add one to EAX. And finally, we're moving EAX back into this memory location. So basically what this does is we move this value into EAX, we add one to EAX, then we move EAX back into, we move it back into our memory location. So where the address at which A is stored, we're moving back uh, EAX back into it. So that's how you increment in, uh, so that's how you increment in assembly. And then what we're doing is we're jumping. So this is uh, unconditional jump. So basically when we get here, we just jump back to uh, this label here. And this just repeats over and over until this comparison uh, is not greater than or equal to, and at which point we jump down here and exit. Okay, that should be fairly simple. So let's take a look at for loops now. Okay, so let's talk about for loops. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting j to be zero. Then I'm doing a for loop across i. So what we're doing is we're going from zero to 10, then we're saying j plus equals i. And that's pretty simple to understand. And the disassembly of it is equally simple. So the memory location indicated by RPP minus four is J and the memory location indicated by RPP minus eight is I. So what we're doing here is we're comparing RPP minus eight to 10 and we're doing a conditional jump here. 
to this label. So when this is finished, so when we finish our for loop, we just jump to this label and uh, we exit the program. So if we don't jump, what we do is we move, we move i into eax, then we add to eax the value of j, then what we do is we move eax into j. So again, rbp minus four, that's j, and rbp minus eight, that's i. So what we do, so what we're doing here, or what the assembly is doing here, is it's moving eax into j right here. Then what we're doing is we're moving i into eax, and we're incrementing eax by one, and we're moving eax back into i. So that's basically how a for loop works in assembly. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, check out the playlist on your screen right now, and I'll see you later.